Accord has released the fourth local government council scorecard report. This 2012-2013 local council scorecard is the second for local political leaders elected in 2011. They are therefore serving their second year of office. The scorecard provides these leaders with a basis for tracking performance and taking action where necessary. Now, joining me in the studio this afternoon is Lillian Tamale, a research fellow at Accord. Welcome to the program, Lillian. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. What do you make of this report or the thoughts on, you, on the scorecard? Um, first of all, Accord, in partnership with Olga, has uh, been conducting local government council scorecard as assessments for four years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, while this one is unique um, in such a way that we also look, we are able to compare the performance of you know, this new five-year term of office, um, we, we have a, a history, you know, yeah. of uh, three uh, years before. Um, the general comments from the report um, are actually great. It's great mm -hmm. news mm -hmm. because uh, on the whole, it's pleasing to note that uh, there is a general improvement in the performance of our district Local leaders. Council, yeah. um, now, this is a, you know, a complete turnaround from the first experiences where we went into these local governments and we were assessing the performance of district, including chairpersons and speakers, and, and they kept challenging us and asking, am I even supposed to do that? Why are you <laughs> assessing me on this? So there is general improvement mm -hmm. across the board. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but then also it's important for our viewers out there to know that um, while we call it a scorecard project, we actually have four different scorecards. We mm -hmm. have a scorecard for the council because we know that um, when the council comes together, headed by the chairperson and the speaker and the entire you know, team of councillors, they work together as a team. Mm. But we also pay attention to the individual contribution of the, of the councillors. So our scorecard puts each and every one of the councillors on the, on spot. the spot. So we are able to give you a report of how and each and of those councillors uh, performed, mm -hmm. but we also have a, a, um, a scorecard for the chairperson because you could be leading, um, you know, mm. a, a district and is performing well, but you could personally have issues or lessons that you want to to, to share. So um, over uh, and above, uh, we realize that um, the. There's general improvement. There's general improvement. In the 26 local governments where we work. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, what stands out for you the most? I know you have talked about improvement, but are there any areas of concern for you in this current scorecard? Um, I think what stands out is the fact that um, while I even mentioned the, the improved performance, there are issues that we want the political leaders to think about mm -hmm. because we realize that uh, while they're, stri they're trying their best to, to improve, the things that are kind of derailing their mm -hmm. progress. And, and one of them is uh, the fact that uh, most of these local governments, or a number of them actually have conflicts, you know? Uh. Leadership conflicts that uh, would uh, affect their performance. Meaning that if a council is performing well, mm -hmm. it could perhaps perform better. It could deliver more services to the people, but we see conflicts between uh, chairpersons and speakers, chairpersons and cows, that is a chief, administrative officers, councillors and councillors, you know, factions. We have RDCs conflicting with the chairpersons. And uh, for, for districts that, that have conflicts, uh, uh, all, all those types of co conflicts across the board, you find that their performance is actually, um, very low. yes, is, mm. is really very low, meaning that it's something to worry about and also something that uh, they need to address in mm -hmm. order to move forward. I think the other key highlight is the fact that um, like I said, we've been doing this for four years, mm. and so we have, we have enough evidence to show that uh, certain things will take you off the development trajectory, mm. and others will take you ahead. Yeah. And one of those is the fact that um, the funding for these local governments is, um, uh, you know, reducing, mm -hmm. and therefore greatly affecting the service delivery at the lowest level of local governments. So what would your recommendations be? What recommendations have been made in the scorecard? Uh, first of all, we've recommended that uh, central government needs to revisit um, the whole budget architecture, and we've made this recommendation before, um, to levels where local governments, since they are part of, 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 of government anyway, mm -hmm. should be able to get uh, enough money to implement the activities that are su supposed to implement. After all, they are implementing on behalf of central government. Mm -hmm. we've, we've gone on to 
to recommend that uh, the percentage should, uh, because currently uh, local governments receive 15% of the national budget, and we're saying that uh, we are showing you that the local governments can't go beyond that. You know, what you see is what you get for the local governments. Mm -hmm. uh, the other recommendation we, we, we make uh, in partnership with ULGA is the need for the continuous, you know, capacity building of these district leaders. Because when you look at the investment that we have put into capacity building, the annual trainings, helping mm -hmm. councillors appreciate their roles, mm -hmm. you realize that there is a general improvement. Mm -hmm. But we are only in 26 local governments. So we recommend that uh, the Ministry of Local Government should embrace you know, this assessment or the recommendations to ensure that l local government leaders elsewhere, particularly the councillors, are trained on an annual basis. Because what we see currently is a situation where councillors are elected into office, and our report shows that uh, over 70 percent of the councillors that we assess are newcomers right. and therefore you could conclude that they are learning on the job mm -hmm. but the ministry only i think trains them um, once in the f you know five years and and of course we all know the importance of regular training so that they are you know up to speed up with to what they're supposed to be doing all right well we have run out of time but just one last uh, question for you we do know that the scorecard is meant to help keep track of the performance of these local council leaders yes and uh, you said you've been running this scorecard for the last four years yes have you seen any improvement is it something that we should go ahead with uh definitely there, there is a lot of Im improvement um uh you know, on two levels. One, there is increased, you know, at, at the level of the individual councillors, there's increased appreciation of their roles, and so there's something to to uh, take to to write home about. Mm -hmm. Because when you find a local leader who knows what they're supposed to do, it means that they are going to do better. Mm. So there's a lot in this scorecard that we think can be imported to other local governments as well. All right. Thank you so much, Lillian, for joining us on NTV at 1, talking about the Accord Local Government Scorecard.